Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, I want to talk a bit about email and forum etiquette. So whether you're corresponding with somebody via email or you are leaving a comment or a post on a forum, there are certain etiquette rules on the internet and it's handy to know them. For instance, one of the most common mistakes people make unknowingly a lot of times is to type in all uppercase. Perhaps they have the caps locked down. Perhaps they find it easier to read things in uppercase so they want to type that way. But in messages, having everything in uppercase is considered yelling. So if you reply to a comment or reply to somebody in an email and you use all uppercase it's like you're yelling at them. So unless you really are yelling at them you want to avoid that. Now one thing you want to do is when you're replying to somebody is be mindful of what you include in the reply. So for instance if I hit reply to this message here you can see it quotes the entire message in there. But sometimes those messages can be long and if it's part of a thread where a lot of people are replying to a lot of other people it can get extremely long. It's very easy to only quote exactly what you need. For instance in this message I just want to reply to that one question. I'm going to highlight it, hit reply and notice that it only quotes that one line. This makes it handy for the person receiving it to know exactly what question you're answering and it doesn't include all of the other stuff including their own signature, other things that other people have posted in the thread, all sorts of stuff like that. So whether it's email or a forum you only want to quote what's absolutely necessary. In fact it's very common on a message board, on a mailing list or in a forum that everybody sees all the previous messages. So you don't have to actually quote anything when replying. Just include your new text. Now you also want to be very mindful of bandwidth. Don't try to send large files to people unless you know they have the bandwidth to handle it. So for instance when I want to attach a photo I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to select a photo and choose it. And Mail makes it very easy by every time you put a large photo. So it only happens when you put a large photo. You get a little image size chooser here. It will automatically set it to small. It will compress the image when it's sending it to the person. But you can choose another size as well. But keep in mind if you choose to send actual size it's going to be pretty large. It even tells me here the message size is going to be 686K. Now that may not seem like a big deal. I mean with high speed DSL and cable modems it's no big deal. But what if the person is traveling at the moment or maybe they have a slower connection than you really think. Uh, there could be all sorts of things. They could be on their mobile phone for instance. Getting a large image or large attachment could be a problem. Also when sending large attachments of other kinds say uh, documents and such it's great to be able to use something like Dropbox, upload the file there and then simply send them a link rather than attaching a large file to a message. Another piece of good advice is to always consider your subject line. You may not get much email, maybe just a few pieces a day. So every piece you may read. But somebody you send it to may get tons of email, maybe from work, from other friends, from things they're involved with. So including a good subject line about exactly what your email is about allows them to prioritize. If it's just a friendly hello, they can read it later in the evening. If it's something extremely urgent, they know to get to it right away. So make sure in the subject line you describe what it is you're corresponding about. And same thing with message boards and forums. Make sure that your subject line really identifies what it is, the question you're asking or the comment you're making. Otherwise people may miss it or not respond to it simply because all they had time for was to look at the subject line to determine whether or not they should read the rest of the message. Now a very sensitive etiquette subject is forwarding. Forwarding messages like jokes or commentary uh, to your friends. Make sure that the friends that you forward these things to really want to get them. It's worthwhile if you decide, for instance, that you enjoy forwarding jokes to all your friends to maybe ask each of your friends, do you want to get these? If you do, I will enjoy sharing them with you. And if not, it's okay. I just won't share those particular emails with you. Make sure that you know everybody who you're forwarding these to really wants to get them, else you may be annoying them and they may just be too polite to tell you to stop. Also it's very important when you get emails, say emails warning you about dangers on the internet or various news items or things that you find to be kind of interesting to check for accuracy. There are some websites out there uh, like for instance Snopes and others where you can actually check to see whether or not the email is real. Most of these actually aren't. A lot of these sensational emails that go around that you may want to forward to your friends actually are false. So you may want to check before you forward. Now here's a big one. You want to make sure that your reply to email address is correct. Now if you're using a advanced service like Gmail or iCloud it's going to be automatic. Just sending it with that account will make sure that somebody can reply to you. 
But older email services like Pop Email allows you to specify your own email address. So you can actually send an email, put in the reply to an email address that's mistyped, and then nobody can reply to you. Then you get mad because nobody's responding to your questions. Now this happens a lot in message boards and forums where you have to type your email address because you're not using your email client. I get this all the time. People ask me questions at Mac most and they either mistype or decide not to include their email address which is really frustrating for me when I try to reply to them with an answer. So there's a look at some of the most common email and forum etiquette mistakes. Hope you found this useful. Until next time this is Gary with Mac most Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.